This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you build your online presence and run your business. All right, number one is definitely the number one biggest question, and it was actually our biggest question when we were coming to Mexico. So I'm sure a lot of people are sort of on the edge of their seats for this one. My fiance Mandy and I have been in Mexico for almost two months now, and there's been a few surprises. Not everything's been exactly how we expected it. So today we're gonna be giving you our seven things we wish we knew before coming to Mexico. Okay, so number seven on the list is visas. So there's one thing in particular I wish we knew before we came here. When I did a little bit of research about getting a visa here, um, I did find that there's a certain amount of countries that's eligible for what's called a visa exemption and luckily Canada and Australia are both on that. Uh, we'll bring up the list of countries on the screen now. But what that means is you can stay up to 180 days. But what we didn't know, which we found out after we got here, that's up to the discretion of the immigration agent that processes your passport and everything when you get um, to the airport. So we landed in Mexico City and I actually don't remember if they asked us how long we were staying. I don't know, it was about 30 hours of staying awake at that point, so. It was a long <laughs> travel day. Uh, but so the, the guy gave us 90 days on our tourist card. So when you travel to Mexico, you'll get given what's called a tourist card on the plane to fill out. And you need to keep this with you at all times. So the Mexican uh, immigration agent will ask you some questions and then they'll write a number of how long you can stay on that card. You need to be careful to read that card. Luckily, I checked ours and saw that it was 90 days. So basically we've only got 90 days here, which is a bit of a shame because we thought we we're gonna have 180. But what I learned is, yeah, it's up to them. They decide if they're gonna give you 180 days, 90 days, it could be 30 days, I think, 60 days. Um, so if you have a certain amount of time, you're gonna be staying here, let them know. But if you are staying for 180 days, you might need to show that you can support yourself and that you have outward flights as well. You can extend that tourist card um, by either leaving the country and getting a new one. So I guess it's like a border run, but I think they're sort of like cracking down on that a little bit so I don't really recommend that but you can go to an immigration office and get it extended but you'll need to show that you can support yourself so you have the money to support yourself while you're here other than that there is another visa option so it's called an extended stay visa or like a temporary resident visa if you want to stay longer than six months uh, you can stay up to four years but again you're going to need to show bank statements to show either an income or savings in your account so that you can support yourself. I'll just leave the website in the description down below for that. And I actually have heard that if you fly into Puerto Vallarta, they will give you 180 days, pretty much guaranteed. And if you're flying to Cancun now, they're trialing a new process where you don't actually have to use the tourist card. They're just gonna stamp your passport for 180 days. So that's something to think about. Maybe it's worth flying into Cancun. Do you know that? No, I didn't know that. So number six is just the Spanish speaking. Um, in comparison to places that we visited in Southeast Asia, uh, where a lot of English was spoken just automatically to us, uh, it was just assumed we only spoke English, which was true. So far in Mexico, that's not the case. Um, we have mentioned this in another video, but I think it's probably a good thing to mention if you're coming over here with absolutely not a lick of Spanish, it's probably a good idea to even just pick up the basics before you come because a lot of the locals just speak Spanish and I think it's also a good sign of respect as well. Uh, here they're very strong in their culture. Um, even in somewhere that's very heavily touristy like Playa del Carmen, so somewhere you would sort of assume maybe would speak a lot of English and yeah, some people do, but predominantly Spanish. Yeah, and I think because like Mexico obviously does rely on tourism, but not as heavily as a lot of the places in Southeast Asia. And because a lot of their tourists are local tourists from other parts of Mexico, and then like a lot of people in the United States speak Spanish as well. Yeah. So they can get away with not really having to speak English. So I reckon if you don't know Spanish, learn the basics, but also just use Google Translate if you need it. 
Yeah, we've actually, we've been picking up a lot, like we've been practicing a bit and being here because you just get thrown into that. I feel yeah. like you pick up the language so much quicker. Yeah. And Ooh. I like it. Yeah, like Mandy said, you just get thrown into it and they'll start throwing out numbers and stuff to you and you got to figure out what it is. <laughs> so number five on the list is taxis. So I didn't know this, but Uber is only available in a few cities in Mexico, which is Guadalajara, Leon, uh, Merida, Mexico City, Monterrey, Puebla, Querétaro, Querétaro. <laughs> That's how you say it. And sure. Toluca. So when you come to a new place like Playa del Carmen or Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, uh, you're going to need to figure out the taxi prices. If you don't speak Spanish, is going to be a little bit of an issue as well. They're probably going to give you a higher price because you're a tourist and you don't speak Spanish. But they do have set prices and zones. So in Playa del Carmen, if you're going anywhere in the central part of Playa del Carmen, it should be 50 pesos. But if you get a taxi from a taxi stand or a hotel, there's an additional 50 pesos on top of that. So it's 100. So don't think you're getting ripped off if they want to charge you 100 instead of 50. Just look where you are if you're at a um, taxi stand or something like that. There is an extra fee. But there is, it's written... Um, in the center part of Playa del Carmen, there's like a sign where the taxi stand is and you can ask the taxi drivers for this um, like basically piece of paper that will show you all the taxi zones and how much they should be charging for each zone. So if you get to know the prices, then you shouldn't have any troubles and you won't get ripped off, hopefully. Yeah, probably just the best bet if you don't want to pay double, like pay the 100 instead of 50, go wave down a taxi on your own don't get it from one of those zones like even if you go to the grocery store for example they charge the extra 50 as well just because they have that premium parking spot i guess to get people coming out of like walmart or shopping center so it's better to flag down your own taxi rather than getting it out of the zones yeah and look i assume it's the same in other places that we haven't been yet they've all got set prices just get to know the set prices yeah also, don't expect taxi drivers to speak English. Um, we found that a lot of them don't. Some of them do, like a little bit, but we've learnt what we need to say when we get into a taxi and we usually like put it into Google Translate where we want to go and then we say it in Spanish. Um, so again, get Google Translate if you're coming here. <laughs> I've, I think I've learned the most Spanish from the taxi drivers so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're just going to take a quick break to tell you a little bit more about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So having started our digital nomad careers about four years ago now, we've used a lot of different platforms to create websites and Squarespace has proven for us to be the easiest to use. Whether you sell physical products, digital products, or just creating a blog site, Squarespace has all the tools you need to get started in your online journey. It's really easy to get started by using website templates that can be customized to fit your needs. You just browse the category of your business to find a perfect starting point and go from there. Believe it or not, you actually don't need to be a web designer or a graphic designer to create a great looking website. So you can save thousands of dollars on outsourcing by just creating it yourself. You can also make use of the insights to help grow your business by learning where your site traffic is coming from and you can build a long-term marketing strategy from there. If you're interested in starting your website today, head to squarespace.com slash LloydMandy or use code LloydMandy at checkout and receive 10% off your purchase. All right, now back to the video. All right, number four on the list is how to find accommodation. And this is honestly one of the top questions we always get asked is how we found like our apartments, our long-term accommodation. And we've found the best place for long-term accommodation. And um, if you're smart about it, not getting ripped off is Facebook Marketplace or Facebook groups. There's a number of different Facebook groups for like Playa del Carmen or any other city usually they have like an expats group so i kind of recommend that across the board wherever you're moving uh, looking up expat groups for any city everywhere that we've pretty much gone has had a expat group so and they've always been super helpful like bali we used them we used it in vietnam thailand so looking that up sort of before you move anywhere but we've definitely had our best luck through facebook groups and marketplace for finding our long-term accommodation. Yeah, me and Mandy have lived in like six or seven different cities and every time 
we go to a new city, uh, we join the Facebook groups because it's the easiest way. If you're looking for a place, just put up a post saying we're arriving on this date and we're looking for long-term or monthly accommodation. Um, this is our budget. This is what we want and it's super easy. Yeah, I find the Facebook groups really helpful as well. If you're looking for something like you need like a local tailor I've needed before or like just things that you would only know if you lived in the city, like people that are hard to find and someone's always been able to recommend someone to me like a tailor or um, like, yeah, anything like that. Yeah. So definitely recommend joining them. All right, number three, uh, this took me by surprise because we spent a bit of time in Bali, about six months there, and we found that gym memberships, yoga memberships, um, I did jiu-jitsu, wasn't cheap. Like it was as expensive as back home in Australia, if not more expensive, would you say? I think it was our biggest expense in Bali. <laughs> yeah, but here in Mexico, um, in Playa del Carmen, it's really cheap. Like. I got a monthly gym membership for 1,000 pesos, which is about 50 bucks US, 70 Australian. And you got about the same for yoga. Yeah, which is in like insane. It's funny that their drop-in price is quite expensive, but if you are doing like a monthly stay somewhere, the prices of sort of everything get better, like your accommodation, the fitness. So yoga was, yeah, super affordable. I think in Australian it comes to about 70 Australian dollars a month, which is insane because their drop-in price was 15 US dollars per class, but yeah, um, 50 US for the whole month, which is very, very affordable here and a really good studio as well. We've been going to Yoga Loft here in Playa del Carmen. We really like it. Yeah, and good gyms as well, but uh, definitely pretty crowded. Yeah. There's, uh, there's definitely a fitness culture here. There's lots of really healthy cafes as well. If you're into the fitness um, atmosphere, it's definitely a good place for that. I think very much at par with Bali was a lot like that. And I think that's really the only place I can kind of compare it to with that sort of fitness, healthy energy around. So number two is car rentals. Uh, actually, it's a lot more expensive to rent like a motorbike or a scooter here than it is in Southeast Asia. And renting a car is not very cheap either. Uh, and that's mostly because like you'll see signs and ads and stuff for like $20 a day or $30 a day car hire. But when you factor in like taxes and fees and then insurance, it ends up being like a hundred bucks a day, which isn't really much cheaper than at home. But I've also heard stories that um, when you rent a car here because you have rental car number plates, you might get pulled over more often and you might get a little bit of trouble from the police. You are actually allowed to drive in Mexico with a foreign driver's license. From what I've seen, I've done a bit of research, but you still, as I said, might get pulled over driving a hire car. So there is an option to rent a private car. There's some companies or some people in Mexico, in Playa del Carmen, that will rent you a car that has private plates on it. You just got to make sure that it has the right insurance on it because you don't want to rent a car without insurance and then something happens and you're liable. Also, check your travel insurance. You might be covered with travel insurance, but a lot of the time you won't be. We just find it really helpful, for example, when we wanted to go to Tulum. Um, a lot of the places in Mexico I think seem to be sort of set back from the beach, some of them, um, or there's just towns, cities only an hour away from each other. So having a car here is quite handy. Yeah, and all the like, the ruins you can go and see and stuff, like you, it's definitely handy to have a car here. But as I said, getting going through one of the big rental car companies, just don't expect it to be that cheap, really. Yeah. All right, number one is definitely the number one biggest question. And it was actually our biggest question when we were coming to Mexico. So I'm sure a lot of people are sort of on the edge of their seats for this one. And from our experience uh, in the last six weeks since we've been here, we felt very safe. And I feel like we've gotten more and more comfortable as we've been here. If we're being completely honest, we were a little bit weary when we first got here just because of what you hear in the media, here on the news. Um, Mexico can sometimes be painted in a little bit of a bad light, I think. Um, like anywhere, there definitely is, you know, crime and things that happen. Uh, but in the areas that we've been hanging out, um, we've felt super safe. There's definitely always police around. Whether that's good or bad, I guess that's up to <laughs> whoever's um, deciding. 
but uh, yeah, since we've gotten here, we've gotten more and more comfortable and felt more and more uh, safe with our surroundings and understanding that the locals that we've spoke to have said that there's sort of crime everywhere and we just hear about that side of Mexico more than the positive, I think. Yeah, we've spoken to a couple of locals and they explained to us that like any like major US city or Canadian city, Australian city, wherever, there's just places that you shouldn't probably go and that applies for here too. So there's places in Mexico where maybe they're not that safe and you shouldn't really go. But in general, um, a lot of the crime that you hear about on the news and that you see stories about is not directed at foreigners or tourists. It's people who are fighting with each other and those crimes are being done to each other, which is still bad, but it's not something that you're ever gonna be involved in if you're just going about your daily business. We don't party, we don't go out at night. We haven't really, what's the latest we've been out here? Nine o'clock, yeah. 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. uh, you'll never find us walking home drunk from a bar here. So that's something that we think about and we don't really put ourselves in those situations. But I can only talk about a general feeling that we've had since being here and um, we've felt safe. Yeah, a real basic level of common sense with being safe, not putting your handbag on the back of your chair, not putting, like leaving your phone on the table for someone to snatch it. There's always gonna be petty crime like that and that's been sort of consistent anywhere I've ever been, <laughs> ever traveled to, even in the safest places. Uh, so it's sort of just doing your due diligence to make sure that bad things don't happen um, and just, yeah, watching your own back. We haven't had any issues, haven't met anyone really yet that's had any issues, so. And from people we've spoken to, uh, we've asked them, is it safe to like catch buses around Mexico and drive around Mexico? And they told us, yes, absolutely, it's safe. Um, but this is, a, we're painting Mexico with a very broad brush because we can't really say definitively that the whole country is safe. But if you think about coming to Mexico and um, you're gonna go to one of the main tourist areas, then I think you have no problems at all. Don't get drunk, don't do stupid, silly things. Uh, I mean, obviously get drunk, but um, just be safe about it and do it in um, well secure areas, I think, yeah. We've been really happy here and we've felt more at home in Mexico, I think, than we have in quite a while. It, it sort of just ticks a lot of the boxes for us and we're very comfortable here at the moment. Uh, so maybe if you're on the fence thinking, wondering if this would be right for you, I definitely recommend coming and trying it. We're, we're really happy here. The lifestyle's awesome. It sort of just feels like you're on a resort holiday every day. Yeah, we're about to go and venture out and explore a little bit more of Mexico to get a better idea of it. I've been here before though, so I do have some expectations, but so far, don't regret coming here at all. So like we said, we are planning on heading out and seeing a lot more of Mexico. So you, if you have any suggestions for us, please fire them down in the comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out and hit the like button as it helps the algorithm as well. Really appreciate you guys watching if you've made it this far and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey!